Welcome to Now Church. We are about to begin. Please take this opportunity to pull out your smartphone so you can like, share, and check in on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please use the hashtag Now Church. Thank you and enjoy today's service.
freedom. In the house of God, there is joy. All the believers, hey. There's an echo in the spirit. If you listen close, you will hear oh, what a sound as broken shackles hit the floor. Yeah. There's a symphony in the making. There is freedom here for the taking. Oh, what a sound is broken. People are restored. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a sound of your people singing. You'll learn it. Say, here in your house, let your praise be loud. Here in your house, let your joy.
So all over this building, do me a favor and lift up your hands to Jesus. All over this room, that's right. These next several moments, I want you to be super intentional. We're welcoming the power of the Holy Spirit. The one who raised Jesus from the dead. The one who empowered him to do miracles and signs and wonders. The one who can set you free of whatever you're dealing with as you walked in this room today. That's the one we're welcoming today. So before we put lyrics on the screen, lift your voices, lift your voices. Come on, lift your worship to him now. Lift your worship now, lift your worship, lift your now.
worship Him all over this room today. Oh, you're welcome here. You're welcome here, Holy Spirit. You're welcome here. 
Awesome. Listen, we're so glad that you were here today, and we've got so many things that are taking place. And we're about to announce a lot of stuff that's happening today, new members that we're going to be receiving in. And after second service, we have a lot of people being baptized, which is going to be amazing. Thank God for that. It's incredible. <laughs> got a lot to celebrate. But we just wanted to really take a moment to really thank all of you as well, too. One of the things that we're so appreciative of, uh, we had this last month that was Pastor's Appreciation Day. And honestly, we just want to tell you as pastors, we're so thankful for everything that you guys have just, just over and above. There were some gifts and cards and just nice notes of appreciation that really helped to encourage us so much, way more than you know. And we're just so thankful because we've been believing God to establish something of an, an atmosphere or culture of honor. And when we're receiving it from you, man, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts, all of our pastors. We just want to, I'm just speaking for all of them. Thank you so much for your blessing and your loving us and encouraging us as we're leading you. So uh, we, we hand clap you guys, all right? We appreciate you. Thank you so much. And one of the things that we were we were doing during this time is we had our our prayer uh, our prayer guide here that we asked for you to pick up. And some of you, so many of you, have been talking to us and letting us know that you're following along with us day by day and praying over these things for us. And we feel the difference when we're covered. We feel the difference, right? Pastor Lindsay, you were just in another country. You feel the difference when you know you don't just go, but you're covered, right? And so we're stepping out and believing God and praying and, and, and to have you guys backing us up means everything. So, you know, what? I just want to I want to pray just for this second about our connection. It's a very unique kind of prayer, very unique kind of thing. But God has put us in this place to lead you. And it's a it's, it's a heavenly responsibility that can be weighty. But it's also a mutual connection that takes place that you're receiving from us and that we're able to give you everything you need to equip you for your call in God. Amen? So let's just for this moment, I just want to stay here in this second and just pray for us. Father, thank you for such an incredible church of now church and the vision that you've entrusted us with. You've entrusted us as pastors to lead it. You've entrusted everyone here to carry a portion of it. And Lord, I thank you for the divine connection that takes place as we come in as we take things to the next level in membership and involvement. But Lord, I thank you for this culture of honor to be able to receive, to be able to receive the word of God, to be able to receive encouragement, to be able to receive breakthroughs. Lord, I give you praise for everything that you're working in our lives. And Father, I pray that that relationship is blessed. Lord, that it is strengthened that we continue to be a mutual blessing and that we find a place that every vision, everything that you're stirring in our pastor's heart, that it has a place of coming alive inside of our lives and it bears great fruit. Lord, we thank you, Father, for helping us to make a difference everywhere we go. Lord, bless these prayer requests that are taking place for our pastors. Father, I pray that everything that is being prayed and every word that is being spoken, Lord, that those words do not return void, but they accomplish what you sent them to do. And Lord, we give you praise for this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, God is good. God is good. God is good. That's cool. They just want you to turn around, find somebody you didn't ride to church with, and welcome them. And then we've got some more things to share with you in a minute. some other things to share with you here real quick but first off we wanted to share with you some new members and we have some of our new members that came to our liftoff uh class this last 
Sunday, and uh, we were able to have our first liftoff class in the other building, which was awesome, amazing. And so we're looking forward to many, many more as time goes by. But uh, we wanted to introduce some of them. Some of them are going to be here first service. Some will be second service. But we want to be able to show you their pictures so you know how to appreciate them and to welcome them into the family. So if you're here when I call out your name, just wave, and I'll point out. I'll see a few of you as I go along. But go ahead. Let's show them show that first slide we have got Michael and Lourdes Alexander and they may be are they there you are good to see you guys fantastic we've got Latanya Bruton Latanya is Latanya here I don't see okay she may be second service we've got Richard and Patty Haas there they are look at that they're like I'm standing up I'm ready to be welcome that's awesome <laughs> And then we've got Thomas Leonard. Thomas Leonard, we want to receive him, man. Awesome. We've got Cheryl Manzella. Cheryl Manzella. A few of them that I'm just mentioning, they're going to be here second service because they're going to be baptized. It's amazing. Sherry Oglesby. I saw Sherry earlier. There she is right there. <laughs> Jonathan Pinya. Jonathan. I saw Jonathan there, too. Where did he go? Okay, Jonathan, he's getting baptized well, too. That's going to be awesome. And then Christina Wright, I saw her over here. Fantastic. We connected with all of them this last week, and they were just sharing their hearts and really ready to get involved, not only become members, but really get involved to be a blessing. So we're really excited about that. So let's just pray for all of them. If you saw them, wave right around you, stretch your hands towards them, and let's believe and receive them. And Father, thank you for incredible new people that you're bringing to Now Church. Father, thank you for everything that you worked in their lives to bring them here. And Lord, we just extend the covering and blessing of now church over their lives lord i thank you that your word said that you set solitary in families and lord we extend that family that membership over their lives in the name of jesus we pray that everything that we have prayed for that we've entered into that we have fought for that we received and we're walking out that all of those benefits are theirs that they get to walk it out in this time and lord help them to find their place of of connection and serving but also friendship and relationships that help them to grow in jesus name amen come on isn't that good give them a hand again cool they get double prayer. You're here first service, but we'll be praying over your second service again. It's going to be great. All right, so in the note, we have a few things that we wanted to share with you. One of the things that was taking place this last week, we had a youth gather together, and they had this event called You Choose. So it was an opportunity for the youth to come, and then they had a chance to choose if they were going to eat salty or sweets, and they chose sweets. Of course, I'm glad they're not salty. PTK. And so uh, anyway, so they had a great time there. And then they chose, you know, who was going to or what they were going to do, right? Their activities they chose. And then they chose together who they would receive from their peers or their youth leaders. And they chose their youth leaders. Come on. So that's cool. That's showing their heart to just receive. And I love that. I love that about them. So you know what? We just love our youth. I say it again so many times. But you know, maybe, maybe you don't have youth in our now youth. But you know what? We so appreciate them and love them anyway and thank God for them and honor them. You know why? Because we're honoring the generation that is going to be leading this church. Come on. So let's just give it up for now. Church, youth, so cool. Got a lot of stuff planned. We're going to be announcing several things that are taking place that are coming uh, very quickly. So I uh, want to make sure that you're always staying in tune. But right now, we always want to we always want to welcome you. If you're your first time here at Now Church, we want to make sure you go by our guest services area, our guest experience. You'll see that as you pass through the Legacy Building. There are friendly people ready to bless you and give you a gift and thank you for coming. And also. Always, 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 we put out a three-week challenge. What is it What is it all about? Three-week challenges is check out Now Church three weeks in a row and see what God does. We just expect that every time you come, God has a reason for you to be here, something for you to receive. You're always growing, always challenged at Now Church. You never want to miss a week. Give God three weeks and see if he starts changing everything in your life, all right? If you will, let's welcome Pastor Richard as he comes up and continues this service. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very good. 
Very good. Good to see everybody today. We're glad that you're here. Those of you watching online, glad you're connecting with us today. Like Pastor Chris said, there's a lot going on in Now Church, and we're glad that you're here. How many enjoying this fall season? We're finally getting a little blast of cooler air. We uh, normally average, I hear, um, 106 days a year of 90 degrees plus. This year was 134. Yeah, a little extra long. It did, did it seem like a hotter summer to you? You know, it seemed like July and August were just kind of a little more brutal than usual. And so we're just really thankful to live in Florida. This is the best time of year to be here, and we're glad that you're here today. We're continuing our series uh, this week called Ghosted. We got this week and next week to talk about that. And this week, uh, the message is called The Holy Ghost Uncorked. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, I want to make a quick announcement before we get into the message. Oh, can you start my timer over? Thank you. They, they, they already started, started the count. Once I, once I made the name of the message, boom, we're off and running. Then I missed out on two minutes. Anyway, um, we want to do something. You know, the, the world has gone nuts. How many noticed that? Everything's crazy. Uh, I was reading some things this week just about um, how discouraged pastors are right now in America. And that's why it's important that Pastor Chris expressed our hearts to you. Somebody even made us fresh baked bread last Sunday. And it was incredible. I'll just tell you that was incredible. And I'm uh, not asking for more bread. We're good. We're, we're, we're trying to limit carbs. And all of a sudden, we were just in, diving in full force. Anyway, but you know what I always say, butter late than never. Anyway, uh, but with everything going on, we just felt to call a special day of prayer this Wednesday. And we're going to do a different thing than we've ever done before. We're doing three different prayer times for all of you that are different. We're not going to have you raise your hands or anything else. Just, so we have 7 a.m. prayer this Wednesday morning. What time? 7 a.m. 7 a.m. this Wednesday morning. Pastor Chris will be leading. It's going to be powerful. We have, for those of you who might be able to come around lunch hour, midday prayer, 1 o'clock. If you can be here for 7 and 1, come both times. It's going to be different. Pastor Gail's leading 1 o'clock. And then 7 p.m. For, for our kind of our normal flow. So this Wednesday, 7, 1, 7. Okay, 7, 1, 7 a.m., 1 p.m., 7 p.m., Whichever time you can come, please pick one and be here. It'll be about a half hour or maybe a little bit more. But we want to pray for this world. We want to pray for our nation. We want to pray for pastors and leaders in this Pastors Appreciation Month. We, want to, we need to pray for the other pastors in our community. They might not have you. They might not have somebody encouraging them and loading them up with carbs and bread. They might not have. And so we want to pray because how many of you know the average church in America is still around 70 people. That's the average church in America. We don't see that because that's not who you see online. That's not who you see with the big budgets. That's not who you see with the mega churches. That's not who you see on television. But that, every church matters to God. Every leader matters to God. Amen. So be with us this week. We're not going to just pray for leaders and pastors, but we're going to include that, Okay because that's really on our hearts right now, and we want to pray for a real encouragement to come upon the body of Christ, all right? So let's get right into the message. How many, how many can be here at least once on Wednesday, all right? Be here at least once, okay? If you can, if you're an early morning person, uh, we want to see you at 7 a.m., and um, I'll be uh, praying for you as I'm rolling over. Anyway, so, anyway, I'm, I'm more of the p.m. guy. I'm the third watch of the night, okay? So anyway, um, John chapter 2, familiar story to most of you. It's the wedding in Cana of Galilee when Jesus is revealed first in his miracle power. Let's begin to read. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. I want to note this. Um, Mary played a significant part, and it's a good thing she's there. Okay, let's just put it that way. Mary, the, uh, so the mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. How many know it's good to include Jesus if you're having a celebration, okay? Uh, this shows right there that he wasn't the sad, the pictures, you know, see this sad Jesus, you know, with his hands folded. 
Jesus, they, they don't invite sad sacks to the party, okay? <laughs> Jesus was invited to celebration. It's important you see this, okay? Now, but Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? This was not, I read a commentary, this was not him uh, disrespecting her by calling her woman. It was, a, it was a, a, a Jewish respect statement. It, you know, basically, um, lady, hey, lady. Anyway, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, notice she ignores what Jesus says, and said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone for the matter of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. These are water buckets, okay, water pots. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He didn't tell the disciples this, by the way. He told the servants of the wedding feast. Go and fill the water pots with water. They filled them to the brim, and he said to them, Draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it, and when the master of the feast had tested, tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. But you have kept the good wine until now. I just want to set the stage for you real quickly. In this time in, 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 in the Jewish culture, a wedding, think about we have, today some people hire wedding planners, okay? And the wedding planner comes in. In this time, there was no budget, there was no big thing, but they took all the money they had and they made a wedding plan. And if they ran out of food or wine, the party lasted for days. And if it ran out, it was a shame to the couple. Their first act as a married couple would be shameful. And people would judge them. They didn't plan well. But Jesus stepped in to take that shame in his first miracle. Read one more scripture, then we're going to pray. Matthew chapter 9, verse 17 says this, Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break. The wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Let's pray one more time. Father, we ask you to come today into this celebration and remove the shame, remove the burdens we feel from times when we planned something out to the nth degree and it didn't happen the way we thought. Come Holy Spirit, be released and move in this place and change us in Jesus' name, amen. Our theme this month is called Ghosted. We've been talking about um, the fact that being ghosted is in, in the culture now is about being abandoned, it's being rejected, it's being suddenly canceled in this cancel culture. Last week we talked about Elisha and the widow woman, and we said, what do you have in the house? We said, oil always speaks of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> if you're invested in God's house, and you've got just one jar of oil, you've got the key to a never-ending flow of God's goodness, mercy, favor, and blessing. Say Amen. And you need to know that in him, <clears throat> pardon me, you'll never be abandoned. He'll never cast you out. He'll never cancel you. Sometimes that's hard to believe, isn't it? When we go through things where we mess up or we fail or we don't plan or we bring shame or we have attacks going on and left and right and we don't know how to deal with them. I want to tell you God's oil can bring a change and bring a shift. We need the Holy Spirit more than we've ever needed the Holy Spirit. I think one of the reasons or one of the situations, one of the results, I should say, from all the pressures of the world is those who will lean into and rely 
and get to know the Holy Spirit, will see their lives begin to unfold in a greater measure instead of a lesser measure. And that's what I want to talk about today. Um, when I was in Cuba a couple of weeks ago, I told you I received some ministry from some people that really didn't know me. Some of the team didn't even know I was a pastor, and I was there just attending this. I was part of a group of 30, 40 people from all over the place. But that last, uh, the, the Sunday night I was there, the three different speakers, as we were minister, as our team was laying hands on and ministering to the people there in Cuba, those speakers began to kind of come toward me, and I ended up being prayed for like seven or eight times, and uh, down on the floor about three times under the power of the Holy Spirit. And you got to know, as a pastor, I don't, I don't get that very often. I couldn't, I couldn't remember the last time that I had someone with those measures of anointing uh, pray for me. And it meant so much to me. But one of the, and there were several prophetic words that came. But the, but the one was um, from a young man and uh, one, of the, one of the speakers there. And, and, he, and he just said... Uh, he said, I hear the Lord saying, Papa is popping the cork. Papa is popping the cork on the new wine in you. And then he came back and again, he said, he said I, I'm telling you, Papa is popping the cork on the new and the vintage wine that he's placed inside of you. He said, some of the wine that God has in you has been there for decades and it's been corked until now. And man, it just, it, it just absolutely ripped me open and shifted something in me. And I began to really lean into, here I was already had this plan to talk about the Holy Spirit this month and everything else. Um, it did something inside me. You know, I learned how to preach at what I call Holy Ghost University. Um, thanks to people who taught me the lesson, what I call tap and flow. Tap and flow means that in the early days, we didn't usually have written notes or even pre-planned messages. We were just taught to pray in the Spirit and with understanding and simply gather one thought from the throne of God. Gather one thought. That's why first and second service sometimes comes out so different here in church on Sundays because I'm a tap and flow guy. But that's what taught me to preach a now word, a prophetic word, and not, not, not just go on old oil, old wine, old stuff, but to be ready and present in the moment to tap the flow, to do, just begin to tap <clears throat> like you would... Like in high school when you used to tap a keg. I'm not going to ask for an amen. But you know who you are. <laughs> you tap something, and then when the flow starts flowing, you just drink it. You just use it. You just, you utilize it. Some of you so you're born sanctified. Come on. <laughs> Lighten up a little bit. The fact is there is a flow of the Holy Spirit. Like someone would pop the cork on a bottle of champagne and see it bubble up and overflow if it's all shaken up. And that's how God wants to reveal himself to us in this generation. Where there's more pressure, there's more shaking, there's more bubbles. Okay? And so the Bible says that when the shaking goes on, we, are, we live in a, in a kingdom that is unshakable. But in that time, the Holy Spirit wants to reveal Jesus in greater effervescence, greater bubbles, greater strength, greater capacity. Yes, the Holy Spirit is described as anointing oil like we did last week. He's symbolized by a dove, the symbol of peace. His atmosphere is often described as a fire in a cloud by day, in a fire by night, even in the Old Testament. 
He comes as a rushing mighty wind. He blows wherever he wills. He's called the spirit of truth, the spirit of grace, the one who convicts sinners of their sin to repentance and convinces the children of God of their righteousness. He manifests the kingdom in righteousness, peace, and in joy. And I want to talk today a little bit about the joy factor of your life. Because the fact is that so many people need the new wine right now. But the problem is in the church, too many say, are sitting there saying, but the old is better. I want the old wine again. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. And come on. No, we don't, we don't need that. We need, we need the freshness of God in the now. We need God to show up now. We need him to be who he is right now. We don't, we don't need some warmed up leftovers. We don't need just some kind of, we, we don't need to become addicted to a form and a formula and a methodology of the past. We need to be awake and alert now to what God is doing. I saw something on Instagram the other day and this um, old pastor in a suit and tie was criticizing those churches that use the 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 smog, you know, fog machine and the, and the, and the drums. And, and, and he said, and, and that was caused because of this, this, uh, this Jesus movement in the 60s. And now you've got these churches that don't have any fear of God because they don't wear a suit and tie. Think about it. Sir, you just lost me. What does a suit and tie have to do with fear of the Lord? What does a suit and tie have to do with the presence of God at all? But that's somebody who's stuck in the past. And all they can do is criticize everything new. Because the new wine, it can't possibly be as good as the old stuff. When the Holy Spirit is working in our hearts, the Father's love becomes our main motivation. And we experience what it's, likely, what it's like to actually be the children of God. The Bible says through the Holy Spirit, we call God Abba Father or Papa God and recognize we've been adopted into his family. Today we're looking at the description of the new wine of the Holy Spirit. And I want to say this, what does, what does wine do? What does wine do? Not whining, what does wine do? We're not talking about whether or not a Christ follower should drink alcohol. That's a matter of personal conviction and not something we do from this pulpit. That's, that's up to you and the Holy Spirit in your life. But Ephesians 5.18 says, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Be being filled. It is, a, it is a progressive word. It is a word that means that you can't just drink in once and say, I've got it. But you have to find, as much as you're giving out, you've got to be taking in. As much as you're giving out, and I hope you're giving out a lot. I was on my way to church this morning, and I saw a truck ahead of me with, uh, you know, the, 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 the back seat has two seats in the, in the truck, big truck. And it was loaded with people, and I thought, I hope they're coming to Nell Church. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I'm, I'm seeing in my heart the day when nobody's coming to church by themselves anymore, but we're bringing people with us. And bring in people knowing that God's going to show up in a way and touch them in a real way. That he's going to make Jesus real to them. What's your joy factor right now? It's a crazy time. I look around the room, maybe you're going through something right now. Maybe you're going through a challenge. Chances are, if you're not going through a challenge, somebody around you you know, within one or two seats from you is going through a crazy, crazy time. And God knows that. But he's supplied everything we need for those moments. You know, good wine, when we're encouraged to not be drunk with regular wine, but be being filled, it's, it's, there's a comparison there, a contrast. Draw in more of the Holy Spirit. Be filled with him. Good wine lightens inhibitions. Good wine relaxes you. Good wine has health benefits, anti-aging, loosens you up. 
Let me just say this to you. Some of you need to be, uh, be open to be a little bit spiritually tipsy. <laughs> because you get so stiff when you come to church and this is a celebration. And Jesus is here. And we're not going to run out of wine. We're not going to run out. Because in this place, he turns the water of the word into new wine. The Bible says when you're spiritually tipsy, how, what's the indication? Of Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Listen to that, Listen to that description in Ephesians 5. Speaking to yourself. You ever, you ever seen people walk down the street just speaking to themselves? The Bible says yeah, all the time. The reality is that we're supposed to be speaking to ourselves also, not like the crazy, but like the people that, are, that don't care what anybody else thinks. I mean, there are angry drunks, admittedly, but there are some people who just, I love you, man. <laughs> Drinks are on me. And that's the real thing. The real, real thing. There's a joyful inner life. There's a song in your heart that's available. But are you letting it out? Are you expressing? Or are you so afraid what everybody else thinks that you're not willing to drink in the Holy Spirit? The Word, God, word of God cautions us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. It's interesting, isn't it? Don't grieve the Holy Spirit, Paul writes. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus said the only unforgivable sin from which there is no way back is what? Blaspheming the Holy Spirit. To speak evil. Jesus warned the Pharisees because they said he's doing, he's, he's doing these works and he's, he's doing these miracles by Beelzebub. He's doing them by the Lord of the flies. He's doing them by the devil's power. Be careful. You know, the fundamentalists want to kind of say the same thing about us. I always say about fundamentalists, they, they, they take out all the fun and put in all the mental. <laughs> I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just trying to tell you there are going to be those who are going to criticize. But it doesn't matter. Because when God is in you, on you, with you, around you, working through you, it doesn't compare with anything. But if there's such a sensitivity in the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, if there's, if there's, a, if there's a caution not to grieve him, and there's a warning not to blaspheme him, then I suggest to you that we need to be more mindful of the Holy Spirit's presence and person and power in our lives and around us when a lot of times we ignore him. When the Bible calls him the helper, the helper, he's the one that's going to help you. When you don't understand the word of God, it's the Holy Spirit who helps you understand it. When, you, when you're discouraged, it's the Holy Spirit who comes to help you get through it. So in my remaining time, I just want to talk for a few moments about what puffs the cork on the new wine and what blocks the flow. What pops the cork and what blocks the flow? I'm going to give you a few thoughts, certain things we can look at. Number one, focus, focus. Paying attention to God or ignoring God. Jesus said many times, he who has ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, he who has ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, he who has eyes to see what the Spirit is doing, we need to be more mindful of that presence and the power of the Holy Spirit around us. Deuteronomy 7 talks about it, even in the Old Testament, verse 12. Then it shall come to pass because you listen to these judgments. Everybody say listen. Yes. It says, and keep and do them, say do them, yes. that the Lord your God will keep you 
keep with you the covenant and the mercy which he swore to your fathers. He will love you, bless you, multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your grain, and your new wine and your oil. He will increase those things if you'll simply focus and pay attention. A lot of times when we go to work, we forget the Holy Spirit's still with us at work. And we just kind of do our thing, do our job, go through the motions. But he wants to help you on your job. Man, I'd love to just talk about that for a few minutes. I don't have time. 1A, I want to give you another part of focus, is intimacy. I want to suggest to you today, and I want to, I want to tell you very clearly, there is an intimacy with the Holy Spirit that most of us are missing if we're not really leaning in. The Bible says in Jude, it's only one chapter, but Jude verse 20, but you beloved, you're loved by God, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Paul said uh, in, in Ephesians, when he talked about put on the armor of God, he said, and pray for me with all kinds of prayer in supplication in the spirit. Pray for me in the spirit. Pray for me in the spirit. He said, I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than all of you put together because tongues is a big part of me getting past this and tapping the flow of this. There's a time and a place to be intimate with God. I love 1 Corinthians 14 too. For he who speaks in a tongue doesn't speak to men. It's not about the public thing. But to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Did you know God has given you the power to understand the mysteries of heaven? But not through your brain? It's got to be through the flow of the Holy Spirit in your inner man. And when you lean into him... You know, why, why do you think Paul said to Timothy, listen, I want you to stir up the gift of God that is inside of you through the laying out of my hands. I want you to stir it up. Why? Because it can become so flat when you open the bottle and you lose the bubbles that you've got to close it up and shake it up again and then get ready to, for it to flow again. Intimacy. There's an intimacy. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 4, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. It's a building yourselves up on your most holy faith. When I, when I, when I get to the place, listen, we all are in places when we hear about even Israel two weeks ago and all the stuff going on in the world where you don't know how to pray for as you should. But the word of God says, and the, but the Holy Spirit himself prays through you with groanings that cannot be uttered in man's language. There are overwhelming, there's so many overwhelming moments, and I wish I could tell you all the overwhelming moments are over for 2023. It's going to be a perfect world. Let's sing Kumbaya. It's not going to happen. We have to find a way to drink in that new wine in the middle of junk, in the middle of pressure and challenge. We have to find a way to get refilled. Listen, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 2. By Acts chapter 4, they're praying, God, Holy Ghost, come fill us again and give us boldness. I'll talk about that in a few minutes too. One person helped me a lot when I first was filled with the Holy Spirit. Many years ago, one of the leaders of the Charismatic Renewal was a guy named Bob Mumford. He had published a magazine called New Wine. And um, he gave this example, one of, the, one of the couple of times I heard him speak in person. He said this, imagine that you are uh, in springtime and you go to mow your yard and do some yard work and you get really, really hot and your hose has been out there all winter long and you decide you need a drink of water. And so you go over to your hose and you turn it on and you put it up to your mouth. He said, you're going to get all kinds of crud in there. You're going to get all kinds of dirt. You're going to get bugs. You're going to get a horrible rubbery taste. It's going to be awful. But he said, if you take that thing and you put it on full blast and you let that hose run for a while, you'll get to some ice cold, fresh water eventually. 
said, praying in the spirit is like turning your hose on full blast and just letting it run for a while and letting God just fill you up to overflowing and then you're ready to be used of God to encourage somebody else. That really helped me, and I hope it helps you. But somebody in, uh, I was praying for some people in my uh, small group recently, and uh, one of the young ladies said she was filled with the Holy Spirit when she was like 11 years old. She believed in the power of the Holy Spirit. She experienced it as a child, and yet she doesn't regularly pray in the Spirit. Well, God gave you that gift not to put on a shelf or say, I, I had an experience, you know, 10 years ago. I had an experience two weeks ago. That's not the point of this. This is about a relationship, an intimate relationship with God. Let your hoses run until you find the fresh flow. Amen? I got to hurry. Number two, what pops the cork is obedience. What blocks the flow is disobedience. Obedience is a quick response to direction. You know, when your kids are small and you're so worried about them running out into traffic and stuff, it's so frustrating when you say, come on, get back on the sidewalk, get, get, stay out of the road, look both ways before you cross the street, all these things. But if you can train them to respond quickly to your voice, then when that moment counts, Get out of the way. Step out. And they just will do it automatically instead of questioning. We live in a generation that questions everything God says. Everything God does. We want to run it around in our heads. We want to deal with it in, in, in analysis. Well, let's measure that and see. No, listen. When God says something, the Bible says in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 30, I think it is, uh, that God will be behind you saying, go to the right or go to the left. He'll be behind you, guiding you. If you can learn to respond to that still small voice, it will save your life. It'll save your life. Where you're walking, where you're driving, where you're traveling, wherever you are. Quick response to direction. I love in Spanish when I talk about the anointing in Spanish-speaking churches and, and around the world. Uh, when, I talk, when I say anointing, they say unction. They talk about the unction. And that's a great way to describe what the anointing is, the, the new wine, the oil of the Holy Spirit. There's an unction. There's an unction for the function. There's something that comes and you get a, you get a, 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 a nudge. An internal nudge. I want to call you as a congregation to become sensitized again to that internal nudge. That you can discern his voice and his leadership so much that you don't just go, when there's an unction to do something, you don't just go, well, let me think about that for a while. Let me see what everybody else thinks about it. Let me call, let me call my friends and see what they think about it. Can I get you to pray for me? I felt like God's... If God has unctioned you to speak to somebody, don't go to 10 people and get an opinion about it. Just go say hi. <laughs> Obedience. We used to sing with our kids. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Be led by the Spirit. Just be faithful. At the wedding in Galilee, Mary recognized the problem and thought of the solution. And here's what she said to the servants that didn't even know. We don't know how well they knew Jesus. These weren't disciples. But she said, whatever he says to you, do it. There's a novel idea. <laughs> whatever he says to you, whatever Jesus says to you this week, just do it. Do you know that it may be that moment that you care for somebody else that God ministers something back to you. Had Jesus, this is my question, had Jesus turned water into milk for his morning Cheerios at one point and his mother knew he could do it? I mean, there's something, she, there's some kind of track record where she knows something that none, nobody else knows. 
And I don't know what he did before, but I know at this point she's going, okay, you can do something about this wine issue. And he even said, mama, woman, lady, it's not my time. She completely ignores that and says to, gives the command, whatever he says to you, just do it. My friends, that's persistence. That's obedience. That's, that's that step. Jesus called for the six water, pot, water pots to be filled up with water. I would just say this. In obedience, just give God something to work with. If all you have is water, get the water ready. God can turn it into wine. Number three, I got to really hurry. I'm two minutes over. I got to hurry. Three, righteousness pops the cork. Sin blocks the flow. I mean, I'm talking about that. I'm not talking about you messed up. I'm talking about unconfessed, unrepentant sin that dulls the senses. If you keep pushing past the conviction, overriding what you know that you know that you know by the Holy Spirit, then God will back off. The Spirit of God will back away. Not to, he won't abandon you. He'll just wait on the sideline till you realize he's not doing anything and wait for you to turn back. 3A on that is part of righteousness is humility opens the flow. Pride blocks it. Total dependence on God. I, I, just, I, I just gotta quit. I, I, I got more to say, but I'm just gonna tell you a quick story. Some of you know the story, some of you don't. Um, there have been, we, we pastored here 33 years since we founded the church. And more than once, I've been the cork on the bottle. More than once. But one of the things was coming out, when, you know, for those of you who may be newer to the area, when the world went into economic recession, the global economic meltdown of 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It affected this area first, deepest, and longest. Because this was a whole different church back in the day in the same room, but it looked different. But we were, we, we had a lot of people, most of our main people that were really faithful and giving were people in construction and real estate in the villages. And all that big boom at that time. And as soon as there was a, a big spike in gas prices in 2007 and then eight all of a sudden the all the sales dried up we had one guy in our church who made six figure salary uh selling homes in the villages and he was one of only 175 staff people in the villages on their real estate sales staff not counting all the independent realtors 175 he wound up delivering pizzas just to put food on the table. It was a serious time, very tough. And uh, by 2018, we knew we were going to have to build the new building. And we knew we weren't where we needed to be financially coming out of the recession. We were, we were coming out, but we were coming out really, really slowly. And we were seeking God. And um, my son, who does church technology all over the all over the country had met a young pastor that had just taken his father's church in North Carolina and the church was just exploding with growth and new things happening and they were about our size and about the age of our church and he said just talk to just talk to this pastor so I called him on the phone just talked to him for a few minutes and in about a 30 40 minute con conversation and I've never spoken to the guy since just some things began to just hit me so strong and I realized that in our coming up out of the recession, we were, we were still a giving church, but we weren't enjoying our giving. We were, we were giving obediently, but we weren't hilariously giving. So let me say this. At the beginning of the church 33 years ago, I didn't know a lot about pastoring. I didn't know a lot of... But I knew how to hear from God. And the one thing God spoke very clearly is, I want you to take the first 10% of everything comes in every week and get it right into an account that so we call it the gift account, Global Impact Foundation Treasury. 
Give, it's a gift. And get it out there to the world. Get it out there locally. Get it out there nationally. Get it out there internationally. Get it out there. Be a giving church. And that was a big part of who we were called to be. The first 17 years we did that. When the, when the economy crashed, I had a, some business people on the board at the time that were saying, look, you, you can't keep, you're giving away too much money. You're having to lay people off and you're giving away too much money. And so we kind of backed down from our giving um, like I said, not fully, but we do. I definitely lost the joy in it. And as we're coming through, my wife kept saying to us and our pastoral team, look, we, we need to, we need to, we're not giving like we used to give. We're not enjoying, we're not helping. We're not, we're not seeing that as a big part of who we are. 2018 in April, this conversation happened with this young pastor and it shook me to my core because I was convicted by the Holy Spirit. I knew that I was, there was a, there was, the church was a champagne bottle, all shaken up, and the cork was right here. Because I, I had made this decision, and at that point, I came back to the team. I said, okay, we're going to get back to the original vision, and we're going to tithe off the top. We're, gonna, we're not just going to do things and have things we support. We're going to get back, and our main thing is going to be our giving. That's going to be our, our prayer and our giving. There's going to be two of the engines that's going to get us through this moment. Well, my friends, that's exactly what happened. When we got the loan to build this building in uh, January, we were closing uh, February of 2022 on the note. And uh, the banker that, that, that helped us coordinate the loan is a spirit-filled Christian brother from Chattanooga, Tennessee. He called me up and he said, uh, I got to ask you a question. He said, uh, can I, not as your banker, I want to ask you a question as your, as your brother in the Lord, as a friend. I said, yeah. He goes, we went over all the forensics of the church, of the, all, the, all the accounting, all the books. He said, can you tell me what happened in April of 2018? I said, why? He said, because we can clearly define that everything in your church's finances jumped forward that month and hasn't looked back since. And he goes, you came through COVID. You came through all the, these things. You came through the, 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 the election season. You came through all the division. You came through all this mess and all this quagmire, all this stuff in the world that's discouraged pastors. You're ready to build a building. But what happened April of 2018? And I said, well, and I just laughed. I said, God showed up and reminded us of the engine of our lives that he had given us from the beginning that we had kind of taken our foot off the gas and he gave us new wine. He gave us a refreshing of his spirit when we simply took a step of obedience. We even had some of our team say, well, what if we start with, you know, let's get back to maybe we can start with 5 or 8% to make sure. No, 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 10%. We're going to do exactly what God said in the beginning. And then when, as soon as we did it, my friends, everything, heaven began to open on us. Heaven began to open. Heart smile had been the, the engine of our giving, and it was just, it was, it wasn't even in the budget. It was just on the side. And then we were giving as well out of the church. But we I lost my joy in the giving. I'm telling you this today because sometimes it's hidden attitudes in our hearts and minds that becomes the cork. And God wants there to be a flow. He wants his Holy Spirit to be free, to move. And every time the Holy Spirit moves in Scripture, Old Testament or New Testament, it's either immediately preceded by, accompanied by, or followed by an incredible move of generosity. Don't sell yourself short. Don't Coming out of the recession, here's what we kept saying. We need to give more, but we don't have it to give. We need to give more. Okay, I'll grant you that. If God will give us more, we'll give more. And that is a fool's errand. That's what a fool says to himself for a lifetime. What God does is he moves through your obedience 
and he wants to do something in your life today. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. I hope to finish this maybe next week. Stinginess blocks the flow. I want to pray for you real quick before we finish the service. Because I will bet you that right now there are a whole lot of people that feel like your joy factor or your joy tank is very low. Discouragement, crippling fear, inability to sleep well through the night, pressure, stress on the marriage, financial stress, physical pain, a wet blanket feeling over your life like you don't know why you don't feel right or feel good or feel like yourself. I want to tell you today that the answer begins with opening the bottle. Today I'm here as your sommelier and I'm here as your corkscrew to help you open up the divine flow of God's spirit. One of the points I didn't get to is this, that to flow in the Holy Spirit, to keep everything moving, you have to be bold. There's a bold faith that's required. So I'm just going to put it out right now. If you're here today or you're at your home right now watching, I want you to stand up right now. If you're a person that is going through one of these things that I just mentioned, maybe you just there's just a heaviness on your life. There's just something where you haven't felt right. You haven't been yourself. You've been going through it and you've been attacked mentally. You've been attacked emotionally. You've been attacked spiritually. Right now, there, you're, you're, there's a depression. I don't care. Well, I want to say depression. There's an oppression. There's a depression. There's a recession. There's a suppression. There's some kind of eshem. There's something going on where you've been blocked up. And today, God wants to loosen the flow. He wants to open you up. Stand up on your feet right now. If that's you, stand up on your feet right now. I'm not going to beg you to do it. I'm just going to tell you, challenge you. Just stand up on your feet right now. Relationships are suffering. Stand up on your feet right now. Whether you're at home or in the room. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person hearing the sound of my voice right now whether in the room or whether at home or whether in a hotel or whether maybe you're even, I just want to speak to somebody online right now. You've had suicidal thoughts that have crossed your mind recently that the world would be a better place without you. That is a lie from the pit of hell. We need you here. Whether you're in the room or whether you're watching right now, I want to say to you, you are loved. You are needed. We want you here. God's invested in you. His love for you never fails and won't give up. He's going to keep coming after you right now with his love. His arms are open. Quit beating yourself up for something that happened last week, last night, or last year. It's over. The thing is over. You can't keep crying over the old wine. You can't keep crying over the spilled wine. You can't keep crying over the past opportunities that you missed. Right now, this all you have is right now, in the present. Open up right now in the name of Jesus. Those of you standing, lift your hands up. Everybody else, pray for them right now. Stretch your hands and pray for the people standing. In the name of Jesus, we break that assignment of hell and that blockage right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to open up Open up that inner man. Open up that inner flow. Lord Jesus, your word says you are the one that fills us with the Holy Spirit. You are the one, and we welcome you, Holy Ghost. Whatever you want to do in this place, we say yes to it. We say yes to it. Whatever you want to do, and whenever you want to do it, minister to these people. Let your life flow. Let your love flow. Let your anointing flow. Let the new wine be stirred and come forth in the name of Jesus. Be stirred. Those of you standing, put your hands on your belly right now. Put your hands on your belly right now. 
in the name of Jesus. I speak to the gift of God that is inside of you and I say be stirred again. Be stirred afresh. Be stirred up and come into this place. Come into the room right now. Gifts and power of the Holy Spirit. Be stirred and move on the inside of them and move up and through them. If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, I want you to do it right now, whether you're seated or standing. I want you to pray loud enough for your ears to hear your voice and let that flow of the Holy Spirit just flow, just flow, just flow. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of being a spirit-filled believer. I'm not ashamed of my dependency on the Holy Spirit. Lord, we need you. Come right now. Stir up the gifts of God. Stir up the anointing of heaven. Stir up. Let that new wine begin to bubble inside again. Bubble and flow. Bubble and flow. Holy Spirit of God, move from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Be stirred. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Kyrie. Would you come stand in front of Pastor Lindsay? Just stand in front of Pastor Lindsay right there. PL, I want you to just, I think you got something to say, something to sing over her, something to pray over her. You got something to do. Just pray. Just do whatever the Spirit of God tells you to do. Just do it. of you that are members here, you're, you're connected with us, would you just turn around, put your hand on the people that are standing behind you or around you, in front of you. Just touch those people right now. Go to the people that are standing. <clears throat> your brothers and sisters are praying for you. You're not alone. Can I say, you know what, I'm going to say that real clearly. Listen to me. Those of you at home, you are not alone. What you're feeling what you're feeling, what you're sensing. A lot of people are feeling it. It's not you. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we release your presence and your power. Leona, would you go pray for April back there in the plaid dress right there? If, you're, if, you're, if there's nobody praying for you, please let me know. I want to make sure somebody's with everybody, okay? Everybody has somebody with you. There you go. In the name of Jesus, we release your healing power. Holy Spirit, we release your healing power. Let the new wine of the Spirit be released now inside from above and from within in the name of Jesus for your presence thank you for your anointing it's your anointing, it's your presence that makes all the difference you're not alone 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 you're loved you're loved you're loved, loved. right there it's okay, just to be with them right here. God's doing something right there. The presence of God is moving. It's okay. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
worship you. Jesus, you get all the glory. Only you can make that difference. Jesus, bring Praise God. Praise God. You can go ahead and find your way to your seats again. Man, the Spirit of God is moving all over this place. I love it when God shows up like this. You know, I think sometimes we, uh, I, I like a concise service. I'm a kind of a bottom line guy. I don't like a lot of preliminaries and a lot of pomp and circumstance. But sometimes an effort to make it get right to the point, we don't sometimes maybe give God enough time just to flow. And I think that's a big part of this moment we're in now. We're just excited about letting God be God. You know, the name of our church started as Spirit Life. Then our TV program was called Spirit Life Now. Then we kind of evolved it into just now church. But I want you to know, We've never taken our foot off the gas of the Holy Spirit being the leader here, being the boss. And I just value you so much, Holy Spirit. Whatever you want to do, just do whatever you want to say. Just say it. Whatever you want me to do, just instruct me. God's presence is here. We just close your eyes for one more minute and just thank Him. Just thank the Lord for His presence right now. God, we just thank You. Thank you, Father. Lord, minister to those people at home. That person, that word of knowledge for you about suicidal thoughts, we break that spirit off of you. We come against that demonic lie from hell. In the name of Jesus, and we release God's power over you right now where you are. Get to some place right now and tell somebody what God's doing in your life. Get to some place. Don't stay by yourself. If you've already prepared something to try to take yourself out, I'm telling you, no, this is the opposite. This is, that's the enemy. That's the devil. He's a liar. God loves you, and his plan is for you. But you've got to go make yourself accountable to tell somebody that you know that's a spirit-filled Christian. Tell somebody that's closest to God. Uh, in relationship that you know of, let them know and get some help today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Ushers, would you get ready? We're going to receive our tithes and offerings real quick right now. All I can tell you is when you put your heart back into putting God's house first, he's going to take care of your house. You're worried about your house right now, somebody? You take care of God's house, he'll take care of your house. It's not a, it's not a cliche. It may sound cliche. It's not a cliche. <clears throat> when we have been, our, and been, been focusing, like last week, we focused on getting our tithe from all of last week right to Israel. Even though we already had missionaries and things we supported, we just did extra. We just did extra. I'm telling you, things open up this week. Things open up this week. Why? Because God can trust somebody who's not in it for themselves, hanging on tightly to everything you got. When it's all His and you recognize it and you become a vessel through whom He can pour out that new wine into some other land, some other person, some other situation, you will never lack new wine because it becomes a spring inside of you, bubbling up. Amen? Amen. I'm going to pray for you in just a second. I'm going to give you one more minute to prepare. Um, part of the lesson, the year before 2018, the, the April 2018 thing, and I'm telling you, it was a major breakthrough in, in our lives personally and in this church's life. Major breakthrough. We'll never go back to what we were before. 2017, Hurricane Irma hit. Like September, October, something like that. And we had... People trying to escape from South Florida, driving up, clogging the roads right here. They were so busy on I-75 that they were backed up here on 441 right in front of the church. And on the Thursday before the weekend of the storm Irma, when it was coming in, our people kept, we kept getting reports. We can't find water. We can't find bread. We can't find toilet paper. The whole, you know, everything's wiped out in Publix and all things, everything's a mess. 
and we don't know what to do, and we can't find anything. And my wife said, <clears throat> remember this is six or seven months before our breakthrough. My wife said, you know what? Let's have a Friday night prayer meeting. We don't know if we can have church on Sunday anyway. We had our service, I guess, for Friday night because we were told that storm would be in on Sunday morning. She said, instead of Friday night coming to, just coming to church, let's get every, put the word out as we can on social media, get everybody that can to come an hour early for church, and we're going to turn our church into a rest stop for people who need to walk the dog, need refreshments, need a, a safe and clean bathroom, and let's turn our church into serving others. Listen to this. The next night when we showed up, everybody that came said, I found water. I found toilet paper. I found bread. I found stuff that I couldn't find. The moment we turned outward instead of inward, we had everything we needed to help somebody else. And then my wife said, okay, Lord, if you'll keep our power on, because it hit, Ir Irma hit around us. She said, Lord, if you keep our power on, we'll use our home in the same way. And that Sunday morning, when everything started happening, whatever the date, the, the storm came in, my wife sent me to Publix, and we got um, spaghetti and all kinds of stuff. She turned our home into a feeding center. We had people in our church that were close with that came around and used our shower. They were without power. They didn't have generators, different things. And we all helped each other make it through. God kept our power on. And we turned our lives into just serving everybody else. And everything, I think the next day of the church, you fed like 80, 85 people or 100 people or something like that. You remember that? But it was a lesson that God was saying, look, if you'll just stop looking out for number one and look for number one and help somebody else, you will never lack and that's what the scripture says. God is true. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your promises today and for the way you've shown yourself so strong. Would you bless the people of this house? Would you help us to see our lives as a care center to help others? In Jesus' name, let there be a never-ending flow and let the cork never come back on the bottle. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your giving. Thank you. All right, as the ushers are helping you, I have a few announcements. The first one for uh, MVP is our men's ministry here, Men of Vision and Purpose. We're going to be gathering together at 5 o'clock, and I need to make sure you got all the information. We changed the location. We are going to be meeting at uh, La Bella's. Italian Piatto and Pizzeria, and uh, we know the owner, Jay, he is opening up his location just for us tonight and just serving us alone, and, uh, and he's uh, fixing up a nice Italian buffet for us. It's going to be awesome. We've gone there before, and he has really been generous with the food. Let's just say that. It's been fantastic, and he's a good friend, I believe, to this ministry. So uh, so we want to bless him, so make sure that you know where we're going. That is going to be La Bella's. Um, let's see. If you have not uh, RSV with me, RSVP with me. Let me know. I need to know how many people are definitely going to go. Uh, also, we have uh, prayer again. We want to make sure we understand prayer plus. This is going to be this Wednesday and three different times. Time uh, 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 one location, but three different times. So if you can be here in the morning, maybe you're an early riser before you go to work. That's going to be 7 a.m. Uh, we'll have another one at 1 p.m. and then another at 7 p.m. So regardless of that time, or like Pastor Richard said, if you want to be available all three times, come. That would be fantastic, but we're going to really pray and get a hold of get a hold of God in a major way. Uh, also, Pastor Lindsay is going to be hosting Dinner with Friends for Singles on Friday the 27th. We've been announcing that. That's coming up, and so that's going to be on the 27th at 7 p.m. here at the church. It's for all singles 18 and up, so we don't want to miss that, and uh, Pastor Lindsay is ready to host you. 
Yeah? Okay. He's ready. So, let's see. And the last thing is we're hosting a free special Now Kids Youth uh, event called Trick Shots or Treats. And so this is going to be next Sunday during both services for preschool and elementary ages and it's going to be lots of fun you don't want to miss it just want to make sure that you know what's happening go ahead and stand up we're going to have an incredible time like i said we have water baptism right after second service if you want to stick around for that it's going to be a great time to celebrate them be blessed have a great week thanks for joining us at now church for the latest updates visit us at nowchurch.com including live or on-demand video event registration, online giving, and much more. And don't forget to follow Now Church on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please use the hashtag NowChurch. Thank you, 